I'm Karen McMahon with Pig Health Today, and I'm visiting with Laura Bruner, a veterinarian at Swine Vet Center in St. Peter, Minnesota. Laura, you've been doing quite a bit of work with Mycoplasma hyopneumoniae, and, um, and more recently, it's been with eradication efforts. Um, can you tell me about the success you've had with eradication efforts and, um, and how you maintain them? Yeah, so within our uh, clinic, we've probably eradicated mycoplasma in close to 200,000 sows. Mm -hmm. And so uh, mycoplasma hyopneumoniae is a very significant pathogen to pigs. And so if we can eliminate it, we, we like to. Um, and then once we eliminate it, it's really important that we try and keep it out because a negative herd, um, it can be very devastating if they're negative and mycoplasma um, introduces into the herd. And so, um, the most common entry is usually guilt introduction. Uh, mycoplasma can enter through the air. It's a less frequent of event. Um, it's not as common as PERS introductions, but um, can happen. And so what we focus on is once we get a herd negative, how do we keep it out? Why don't you tell me about your surveillance uh, monitoring efforts in the herds that are negative? Sure. So. Um, most commonly, uh, we'll have sow farms that enter in gilts either as 50 pound pigs, feeder pigs, um, or as select animals, so around 200, um, 280 pounds. And so it's really important that those animals coming in are negative. Uh, historically, we've done a lot of serology to um, test and see if, uh, if gilts are negative for mycoplasma. And what we found out over time as the testing has gotten better is that that's really six weeks behind the infection. And so if I bring animals into my herd and I'm testing for mycoplasma and I do serology, um, there's a good chance that I'm gonna miss a really acute infection or a recent infection. And so what we've done uh, more commonly now is laryngeal swabs. And so that's basically um, testing um, animals, usually commonly 30, 30 gilts um, before entry into the sow herd, and we do mycoplasma PCR. So we're looking for the actual bacteria mm -hmm. in the gilts. It looks like the laryngeal swabs or the deep tracheal swabs are um, mm -hmm. where the industry is kind of going for mycoplasma. Mm -hmm. Did you have some, um, you said the serum has been widely used, and um, but you've learned now that's like six weeks behind. Have you had some bad experiences with that? or? Yeah, I think, I think historically we didn't um, understand mycoplasma as well because that's really all we had. We had the serology and so um, after the fact when sow farms would break with mycoplasma, um, you know, you'd go back to the serology and say, well, they were, they were negative. But in hindsight, we probably missed a lot of acute infections um, relying on the serology. And so the PCR and doing the laryngeal swabs has been, has been awesome. We've been able to kind of real time test for mycoplasma where historically we have not been able to. The serology, we're really looking at antibodies and um, if you look at say like a PERS virus, usually the, the animal develops antibodies within seven to 10 days post infection. Mm -hmm. And so mycoplasma is a little bit unique in that we don't start seeing antibodies in the serum until um, you know, somewhere four to six weeks post infection. And so, um, you know, knowing that information, we knew that we had to find other alternatives um, to try and find a, an acute infection. And so the laryngeal swabs, um, we test for mycoplasma PCR. So we're actually looking for the actual bacteria versus the response, mm -hmm. like the serology does. The laryngeal swab, is that, can you explain that, what that is? We use a, a speculum to, to open the mouth of the animal and then we actually use a, a long spoon that we go back into the larynx of the, um, of the mouth because that's where, um, you know, think about it, if an animal coughs, you're going to have a lot of saliva that, that builds up back there. And so all we're doing is going uh, closer, to the, uh, closer to the respiratory tract and pulling out the saliva that we can actually test for mm -hmm. um, the bacteria. Ropes have been used um, in the past for mycoplasma, but the sensitivity is, is not very good. Mm -hmm. And so again, if you're looking for an acute infection, um, you're, not gonna, you're not gonna find it on, those, on the rope samples either. Oh, okay. So even though that's a saliva test, um, 
it still does not pick it up as well as the actual laryngeal swabs. So we'll um, typically test uh, around 30 animals. When we have a gr group of gilts that come in, we'll test around 30 animals and we'll pull those into three. So we'll get basically 10 PCRs out of a group of, of 30 gilts. And so it's a little bit of a numbers game. It depends on how many animals that you're bringing in, but that mm -hmm. um, 30 has been, a, has been a good statistical number for us to use. How often do you find um, positives? S you know, the testing's pretty new, so we've really only been doing the laryngeal swabs on, south, on gilts going into South Farms for probably a year, maybe a year and a half. And so I've only had a suspect. I've never actually had a positive. Um, and I think it just goes back to the the aerosol infection or infection with mycoplasma is a less frequent event. Um, and so I haven't had any positives to date, um, but have had some suspects. Mm -hmm. And so we basically go back into the population a week later and um, do 60 samples instead of the 30. And we either do the laryngeal swabs or the, the deep tracheal sampling. A regular sow monitoring program? Do you ever do that for mycoplasma? And so really what we, um, what we do is more, um, if, we, if we hear coughing in the south farm, that'll prompt us to test for mycoplasma. We use the same method um, of the laryngeal swabs. And then it's just downstream grow finish. You know, we don't, um, we don't routinely test for mycoplasma in downstream pigs, but if we have a cough, say early, uh, early finishing or mid finishing, We'll test for mycoplasma, and if we get any positives, and we'll we'll come back to the south farm and do more testing. Um, and what's your the success rate on your eradication efforts? Yeah, so we've done eradication on close to two hundred thousand sows, and it's around that eighty percent success rate with their herd closures and medication mm -hmm. approach.